morning, morning, morning. Morning, Roxanne. Thank you for my brooms. Brooklyn, morning. J. Dimple, 66, morning. Sally McNeil O'Connor, morning. Arlene Lewis, Daniela Williams, morning to you all. Angela Maru, morning. Carol Boyce John, morning to you. Cyril Mayas, morning. Gail Jack. Albutha Sampath, morning. Christoph Hope, Mac, morning to you. Ruth Trude, morning. David Clark, morning. Neil Francois, always present, sir, morning. 29 Super C, morning. Daniela Williams, Kathy Belfon, morning. See what on Facebook. Clay Irish, morning. Morning, Carol. Jocelyn Small White, morning. Philomena. Morning to you, Winston Jack, Alison Boyce. Morning, morning, Dan. Morning to Mother Tuna Puna, Pauline Buckmeyer. Morning, Charm Rich. Morning to you, Claire Carrington. Morning, Claire. Mm. Oh, it's people. Mm. Good morning, Miss Gordon. Marilyn Gordon, morning to you. P.F. Cutters, morning. Deborah Duranti, Dwayne Peters, Jennifer Ferron, morning. Brian Deming, morning, morning. Marvin Mitchell, Christopher Serrett, morning to all of you all. Alana Rose, Adriana Alexis, morning, Phyllis Antoine, morning, Richard Aziz, morning, Dexter James, morning, morning. Right, so it is already 6.40. Yes, I, I overslept this morning. I went to the music festival last night. It was a treat. I only found out late though that the music festival was on. Um, and they're now in the Championship championship stage. So they just have three more three more shows, which will be tonight, I think Saturday, and then the gala is on Sunday. So if you haven't had opportunity to check it out yet, you still have a chance to do so to see the best of the best tonight at seven. I think during the course of the day as well, they would have they have performances on, um, but mostly school children, I think, and in the night they have the adult. Um, performances. Um, see what they have tonight, boy. Night session. They have spiritual solo upper voices, spiritual solo lower voices, operatic aria, open choirs, steel pan ensemble, folk song choirs, improvision on steel, steel pan solo. Yeah, so if you're into that, I mean, really, really good talent. So if you ever experienced the music festival before, it's every two years. It certainly would. Um, it's worth the money. Yeah. So check it out. I met I met um, a gentleman last night. He was telling me that his son, fifteen year old son, listens to the uh, to to my live. So I didn't get his name, but good morning um, to them. Hazel Allen, Josephine Guy, Mary the Hair. Morning, morning, morning. Joy Ragunan, and morning, Joy. Jocelyn Small White, morning to you. Raymond Penny, Denise Coggins, morning. Right. So let me just jump into it. So many things happening. Yeah. In the country on a daily basis. Yeah, there's sometimes you just need to engage in activities to clear your head. And I think um, we need more stuff like the music festival. Maybe the country a little angry. And you need things like that that people could, you know, just go and sit down and relax and enjoy the talent that the country has to offer. Not everything is negative, as some people would like to give the impression. 
right? all of these political vampires. Everybody coming together to, to beat the PNM. If the PNM is doing such a horrible job, I don't understand why you need coalition to beat them. If this is the worst, according to some, the worst performing PNM ever, you know why it is? The UNC can't beat on their own. Why they need to form alliances and I don't know, no? So I see Philip Alexander, his latest post, eight hours ago. On Monday night, Kamala asked us to end hostilities, and we've agreed. I've pulled all my combat posts since March 2nd. Ceasefire in full effect. So he ain't cussing. He, he stopped cuss Kamala, and he stopped cuss Gary. Yeah, something that he's been doing for the past year and some, telling us about how terrible the, well, the PNM ain't no good, the UNC ain't no good. And um, of more recent vintage, the NTA is no good. And the only party that could save Trinidad and Tobago is the, the PEP, because they have all of the ideas and, and all of these other political parties are bereft of ideas and simple things. And Philip will fix it. Rowley can't fix it. Kamala can't fix it. Gary can't fix it. But Philip will fix it. And all of a sudden now, Philip has changed his student. Ceasefire. So all the thing he tell us about Gary calling on Gary to tell us about his time as commissioner of police, his time as minister of national security, um, you know, what role he would have played in, in Chan Ishmael getting the Baraka ground lands, what role he would have played as commissioner of police in, in Chan Ishmael getting contracts to fix police vehicles, asking Gary to speak about his claims to the um, Joint Select Committee on National Security with respect to police intelligence that pointed to the members of the opposition Deputy political leaders, at least two of the UNC's deputy political leaders being in cahoots with criminal elements, gang members, the opposition party um, forking out some $42 million in contracts to the criminal element to destabilize the country and all of these things. That no, That is no longer important. That is no longer an issue, right? Philip no longer has a problem with persons who aspire to be um, the country's government and to be part of the country's governance at the executive level, being involved or actively involved with criminal element based on police intelligence. This is not hearsay and this is not propaganda. This is the commissioner, then commissioner of police, stating that police intelligence pointed to that. But Gary has no problem now being in an alliance or an accommodation with such persons. Well, the PNM. When they make claims the PNM does the same thing, but why the PNM had to go? What does that tell you about these people, right? And what their true motive is? They are not about country, not. You see, because if you truly believed in good governance, you would stand your ground. But of course, you know, these guys know they have no hope, right? Because the UNCB is not moving, no matter what. They're standing firm, standing the ground with a leader. And the PNM supporters are not about their foolishness because we see through them. We see what they are about. Right? It's all about politics of convenience. They just want to get into government. That's what it is. We're coming together to, to be the PNM. We're coming together to be the PNM. But there is no shared agenda in terms of policy. So Philip has his own ideas as to how the country should be run. Kamala has her own ideas as to how the country should be run. Gary has his own ideas as to how the country should be run. So there is not a common manifesto. Everybody have their own ideas. So, but we will come together so we can build numbers to be the PNM. And then when we get into government, we will see what could happen. Yeah? But we will deal with that down the road. Right now, the focus is to be the PNM and get into government. What will happen when we get into government? We have no idea other than the real possibility that the same two man rat can live in the same hole will now become five and six man rat can live in the same hole and therefore we go mash up. But we will see how long we can hold it together um, so we could teeth enough so by, that by the time we mash up, you know, we eat our food. That's what it is about, you know, this man, Philip, who wanted to host a program between 20, well, 2014, 2015 called Equal Time on state media CNMG, where he wanted to sanitize disgraced government ministers. Ministers who had been fired for 
alleged wrongdoing. Ministers who named their call up in a wrong stand up, he wanted to sanitize them to save the government, starting with Anil Robertson, room 201. And of course, the email between himself and, and Mun Rudal Munilal, in which he was pitching the idea, unfortunately was leaked. PNM got a hold of it, it was leaked to the media, and that was the end of that. Because remember, around that time was the feeding frenzy. People were eating our food through life sport and so on. We had people like Mikey K and those other clowns from the underground report who were eating our food. And therefore, Philip wanted to get in on the action too. Because the trough was open. Hey, y'all, you come. Think to eat and drink like all yourself. Eat our food, drink our juice. And he wanted to participate too. So after listening to this hypocrite for months, more than months, Tell us why the UNC is no damn good, why Kamla is no good, Munilala is no good, Julie John is no good. Today he says, Kamla called or asked them to end hostilities, and they have agreed. This man who can't even end hostilities within his own party, fighting with, with his three deputy political leaders, now want to take them to court for defamation. You can't end hostilities inside your house. Charity begins at home to go abroad. Huh? L always fighting, not now, from ever since, from the foundation of that party. There are video, um, audio recordings with him and cuss out with, with other deputy political leaders who have since parted ways and gone the merry way long time. So clearly something wrong with he. He is the issue. But you're mending hostilities, you and Gary and Kamala hug up all your good. Yes, bygones are now bygones. Let the past remain in the past. But you can't do that with your own deputy political leaders and others who disagree with you and the decision, the unilateral decision that you took to throw in your lot to the UNC. Hmm? So I guess Philip can't fix it by himself anymore. So now he has also joined the UNC propaganda bandwagon. So he put out a post 10 hours ago reading, Rowley coming for your savings. This mad child of Maduro is eyeing your hard-earned savings we cannot allow this to continue. It's time to mobilize and march to get the communists out before we lose everything. Did he, did, does he recall that one of the reasons or the issues why Kamala Prasad Bises and the UNC lost the 2020 general election was their stated intention in their manifesto that they wanted to use the quote-unquote idle cash balances in the unit trust and the National Insurance Board, to create an infrastructure development fund. Idle cash balances. I don't know what idle cash balances, because persons were asking that question. Even the economists and so on wanted to know what idle cash balances you were referring to. So after they raided NGC, they raided most of the bank accounts of the state enterprises, the only thing they couldn't, they didn't touch because they couldn't touch was the Heritage and Stabilization Fund. They got the bright idea, well, if we come back into office, we will go after the idle cash balances of National Insurance Board and the Unit Trust. Unit Trust where significant number of citizens of this country have their little kakada, their little savings, right? Tell you, we want to go after that. We won't touch it. We'll put it in, a, in an infrastructure development fund to, to pave road and all kind of, so we could get contracts to Tom, Dick, Harry, Jenny, and Jane. People who never pave a road in their life, they don't own a backhoe, they don't own a, they don't own a, a steamroller, nothing, right? You have roofing contractors who all of a sudden are now road paving contractors getting contract left, right, and center in Tobago. But the UNC has nothing to say on that. They're not concerned. That when you go on the Facebook, well, not the Facebook, but the, yeah, the Facebook pages and the, um, and you go on the websites of some of these companies, no mention of any experience whatsoever or involvement in road paving. But today they're getting plenty contracts in Tobago to pave road. And the established Tobago contractors who have the experience and get no work. They have been the subject of an audit for the last two years and some paid for with your taxpayers' dollars. But the UNC, Philip, and Gary not concerned about that. Right? This audit we keep hearing about and can't see. All we keep getting is a little snippet here and a snippet there. But that's about it. And it's not even coming from the man who commissioned it, right? who is the chief secretary. 
I saw a clip of him yesterday from some morning show interview that he did, in which he's denying that he ever received any kickback. Well, if I leave you the next week, to come out and say, well, yes, I received kickback. The, um, the screenshot of the of the WhatsApp messages are true. And we didn't expect you to come and see that. So what do you think? The mere fact that you appeared in a morning show and said, um, you want to make it pellucidly clear that you never received, you never request, and, but, 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 and therefore that is sufficient. The chief say he didn't do it, and that is it. We got to go. If he say it, it didn't happen, it didn't happen. But never mind the fact that Watson Duke, just over a year ago, made a similar claim, called a press conference and made claims about you coming to Trinidad and you yeah, going back to Tobago with that bag of money and contractors and the like. Um, you know, but you haven't sued Mr. Duke for that. Now, it's not that I'm aware that there's any litigation brought against your good self, um, brought by your good self against Mr. Duke for such claims, which tarnished your reputation. And here it is again, your name getting called up in a wrong stand up for the same damn thing. But we're going to talk about that another time. So, all of the chickens are coming home to roost. Yeah? Politics makes strange bedfellows. And if you need to sleep with the devil or larger bless to get into government, well, so be it. Right? So be it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, interesting times ahead as we trod on to general election. 2025. So this issue, ongoing issue about the pastor, the Rasta pastor, Rasta wig pastor. I mean, I, must, I like Rasta pastor. Eh? I mean, the real Rasta pastor, you know, and oxtail and, and, and shrimp and them kind of thing. Had some of that on my, on my trip last week from a place called Negril Way. And um, I must say it was very good. Very good. Also had it from a, another place called Dutch Pot. Very good too. Yeah, that's the only Rasta pasta that I like. But you see this um, <clears throat> unfolding saga here. And the desperation of UNC operatives. Munilal, the pasta must tell all on SSA. Kamla and Munilal want answers on pastor's claims. That's all they want answers on. And they want the answers now, 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 right? They want the Joint Select Committee of Parliament and National Security to meet so that they could interrogate Tom, Harry, Jenny, Jean about everything with respect to what's going on in the SSA, right? Okay. Now, we're still asking for answers, Munilal, about the $789 million in ghost houses, right? That went missing under you as Minister of National of Housing, Kamala Prasad Bissessa as Prime Minister, and Julian John as the head of the HTC. We've been asking for answers on that for six months now, and you have been uncharacteristically silent, quiet on that matter, right? Hoping that it would go away. And while, for the most part, it has gone away, it will not go away here. It will not. So your continued silence on that matter, sir, does not make it go away. And I hope that this is going to become a major issue on the political hustings as we head into general election 2025. Because neither you nor know, your political leader have said a word on this matter. $789 million. Not $789, not $789,000. $789 million. All right? Almost a billion dollars in fake houses. You all made a big, a big issue about the 100 million fake oil. Well, almost eight times that is what we're talking about here. So I went on his Facebook page yesterday, and when I saw this article about he want answers, well, I posted the article about the 789 million in the comments telling him, well, the country's still waiting on answers for that. I wish you would answer. Give us some answers. Now call a press conference. We know you love to do that. And talk about that. Are you going to deny it? Hmm? Call your partner, Fali, and ask him, how do you call a, how do you do an interview and deny? Not one blasted word on that. And the supporters in hand, they're not interested in that. Not interested. So when it is that I see the dog liar decided to do a doubles and coffee to compare Dr. Rowley's governance to that of Kamala Prasad Bissessa, and he highlights 12 areas in which he says Kamala beats Dr. Rowley hands down. Yeah? The audacity of the, and, and, and the effrontery of that moron. Talk about, 
you know, Dr. Rowley can walk in Kamala's shoes. Kamala can walk in Kamala's shoes. You need 10 toes for that, but anyway. Um, when I see he does that, that, that comparative between the two, yeah, there's a, a crazy indulgence morning just to play. A little bit, not much, not much, because I couldn't stomach listening to the, um, the whole thing. But needless to say, they're going to beat this like a rented mule probably for the next couple of weeks or so. Um, UNC political leader and opposition leader Kamala Prasad Bisesa has demanded answers on who is the alleged minister with so-called underworld links. She also called on the government to hold the property tax and revert to the 2009 land and building taxes. She says people can tolerate a slight increase against those 2009 rates, but these property tax valuations are wicked and unfair. Prasad Bisesa added at Monday night's UNC um, cottage meeting at Point of Pay. Uh -huh. So here the concern, eh? the only concern with respect to the SSC matter is who is the minister with the so-called underworlding. She's not concerned that Major Best may have been hiring um, we have been engaging in nepotism and cronyism, hiring friends and family members. She's not concerned about that. She do, she don't want no answers on that. She just wants to know who is the alleged minister with the underworld links. And she wants to be the prime minister again. Eh? She wants to be the head of the National Security Council. She's not concerned about all the other revelations that have been made um, with respect to this matter. But she just want to know who is the minister with the underworld links. So I'll everybody working in SSA again, Kamala. Hmm? There are no moles inside it. There's only PNM people working inside in the SSA. Well, I have, but you, I thought you all had um, ears and eyes everywhere. All I could get information with respect to people's personal declarations for the Integrity Commission. Well, you know who sleep with who. You all could go and get information on people deed. And all of this to show who is the beneficial owner of businesses and who is shareholder and all of that. And you, you, you can't get information about this in the SSA. Nah, man. I find that hard to believe. You're, dis you're disappointed, man. I thought by now, well, you would have had a whole dossier. Nobody put nothing in your mailbox. Huh? Well, your mailbox full? You need to clear out your cash or something, so? Hmm? I just asking. People ain't dropping hard copy no more. Come now, man. You need to clear out your inbox, madam. You're late. We're waiting. We want to hear. We're waiting with beaded breath. All right. Prasad Bisesa slammed it as frightening, as a frightening, dangerous sign that the SSA has now has what she called a handpicked person as its head. Rishmi wasn't handpicked. No. She wasn't handpicked. She went through a proper vetting process. Her resume was pristine. And above board, and therefore she deserved the position. She was duly qualified. Yes, she was handpicked. Don't fall for the smoke and mirrors, the big distraction, the narrative that there was a significant national security threat. The same woman who told us as prime minister that there was something afoot, something was about to happen that would make the 1990 coup look like a tea party, telling us now, don't fall for the smoke and mirrors, the big distraction, and the narrative that there was a significant national security threat. All right, madam. UNC Deputy Political Leader Rural Munila said the country needs a credible explanation on the expanding issues concerning the SSA, including the three-year employment of Pastor Brown. He said explanations are also needed on whether Police Commissioner Ula Hayward Christopher is aware of the senior police official with whom Brown allegedly met. <sighs> Never a dull moment with these people. Eh? Hypocrisy knows no bounds with these people. So we went from, they were concerned about Major Best, now we're only interested in is who is the minister, or alleged ministers, with links to the underworld. People with credible links to the underworld want to know. Well, you want, anyway, look, let me just stress myself with that. Eh? <laughs> hey, boy. <laughs> right. So they're not questioning the um 
the sanity of this pastor. They are not concerned that persons who would have been privy to significant confidential information has no problems going from media house to media house to media house to talk, to make certain declarations, things that are supposed to be private, confidential. Now this man going, anybody who call him for an interview, he's there. You know, like Gary Griffith, who also has a, a problem with respect to confidentiality. You know, things that the public ought not to know. Um, you have no problem talking about that. You may concern about that. The pastor come and he says something, and let me run with that. We go with that. Right? The links that this pastor had with the former member of parliament for Rima, 2010 to 2015, Roger Samuel, we're not concerned about that. No, we're not concerned about any of those things. All the hiring practices, forget that. That is not important. What we want to know is the, we only want answers on the revelations of the pastor. Whether or not there is any credibility there, forget that. We're not interested. But they want to be, they want to leave the country again. All right. We will see how that how that story continues to unfold, right? Um, but the Prime Minister has asked for patience. Tell them, look, the investigation, this thing is re of recent vintage. The investigation is ongoing. You need to give it time. All they want answers and answers is a process. The police are conducting an investigation into the matter. I don't think all they expect us to come every day and call a press conference to tell you, well, this is what the police find out yesterday. This is what the police find out this morning. This is what the police find out last night. So maybe they want Minister Hines and Dr. Rowley to call a press conference every two hours or every hour and the hour to tell them, well, okay, this is how much we have so far. This is what we were told in the last hour. So we just thought we would appraise you to keep you up to date now. You know, that's how it's supposed to work. We are not about allowing the police to do their comprehensive investigation and to present a file. And then we can tell you what is what. Is what. That we brought back Major, well, Brigadier Philip Spencer to do what it is he needs to do. All of these things are happening. The audit is ongoing. No, that's not enough. We want to know every hour on the hour what is happening. Well, yeah, what? Well, yeah, what? I'm to tell Gary, well, you put in on the investigative team too. So you can keep you all abreast of what is happening. Or is it that you all are concerned about what information the SSC might have on all here? Hmm? You're afraid of what? Who will talk? Anyway. <laughs> Folks, I did say this is a... Let me get this here. Hmm. Forgive me. Let me put this on. I did say this is a craving indulgence morning, and you all know when I say that what that means. I'm just going to play a little bit of the clock. Just a little bit. Right. Not that. So. Oh, right. Jumpers and coffee. Yesterday. Hold on, hold on. Forgive me. Just now. One second. Jumpers and coffee. Yesterday, we had a little debate amongst football lovers who, which team is the most successful premiership team in the last 10 years. As you know, I'm a Manchester United fanatic. Look my water mug, right? Since 1977, Manchester United in my heart. I have the best football. Pep Guardiola was coach of the year of blue. But I had to vote for the truth. Those are the facts. And that's what you must vote on. Facts. Facts are Kamla Passad, the sister, beats Keith Rowley in every aspect of governance, policy, and ease of living in Trinidad and Tobago. Let's just go through some. I, I wrote down some and you decide. See it for yourself and then understand. Elections can be very simple. When, no matter what, 
how passionate you are about your team like I am about Manchester United. Truth is true. Facts are facts. Crime. Kamala Prasad Bissessa surpasses Rowley by miles. Rowley's team has the record now. In the top five, they have four out of five. And fifth, the fifth one is a PNM from 2008. So Rowley, the most murderous years in Trinidad and Tobago history, along with other crimes and criminality, Rowley loses to Kamala. Jobs, Kamala created 55,000. Rowley decimated 123,000 jobs, shut down refinery, jobs up losses up to 200,000, including private sector. Energy sector, NGC make a loss for the first time in history under Rowley. <clears throat> Boyd Lisa operating at 28% as opposed to 74% under Kamala. Kevin Ramnarang had energy sector bid rounds. And some of the gas production that is holding our heads above water was Kamala and Kevin Ramnaran. Kamala had the refinery up and running, job creation, forex creation. So the energy sector, Rowley, loses hands down to Kamala. Education, Tim Gopi Singh, Fazal Karim, blow out, Garcia, Sleepy Garcia, Lovell Francis, and Gatsby Dolly. Blow out, it's not even close whether gate, whether funding, whether opportunities, performance, CSEC, CAPE, SCA, across the board, school construction 106, gate 726 million, 59,000 students as opposed to 29,000, school feeding 76,000 meals per day as opposed to 89 grounds, national centers, aquatic center, cycling velodrome, tennis center money across the board culture carnival Kamala wins this is just facts no emotion labor Kamala sol and conclude 143 negotiations some dating back to 2003 give 40 percent back pay respect all labor across the board all labor unions met at the table and people got their money rowley nothing and then eventually forced to tell you four percent and tell you that labor, if you get your money, the country will, will be decimated and the economy will shatter and so on. Rowley disrespects labor. So on labor issues, in 2015, it's now at 6.2 billion, when it should have grown in the last eight and a half years to somewhere about 16 billion US. Rowley's a total failure. Kamala had 14 months import cover, Rowley down to six and a half months. Rowley loses on foreign exchange. You know it. You can't even go in the bank and get now. Your credit card limits gone down from 10,000 US to 5,000 US, from 25,000 US down to 12,000 US. Banks betting you to give you 200 US alone. Fuel subsidy. Kamala left the fuel subsidy there for you because it belongs to you, because you own the oil and gas. Therefore, you could fill your tank cheaper. Rowley took it away five times. In but laughing, your fuel subsidy is gone. Regular gas is gone. On fuel, Kamala wins. Rowley loses. Food prices. Kamala took back off of 7,000 food items on top of investing $1.2 billion a year in agricultural production and increasing production, access roads, ponds, and so on. Rowley put back that on food. Food prices, inflation between 2015 and 2023 has increased by 49% on food prices. House turn on. Right now, down at 12%. Riots, people that are burned, tires for water. The PNM telling you, don't burn. You know, and it amazes when I listen to this man, right? He is just be pulling figures out of a hat or from where it is the monkey for the nuts. I, did, I listened to some of these figures and I asked myself, where you get this from? But you see, you could quote figures like that with gay abandon because he knows that the, 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 his prime audience, the waterfront ilk, don't know they are assembly from the elbow. So any figures that he quote, they figure it right because it's something good. And he like to talk about billions. Yeah? But they're intellectually lazy, so they're not going to look to research and see, well, 
What he's saying there is really true. And I, and I keep making the point. These fellas need to understand. We live in the age of technology, right? Where you, as they're talking, you could fact check anything that they say. And the majority of what this man says when he quoting figures is lies. He will do a he will do a live now and quote some figures for you, and then two weeks from now he do the same. He do another live quoting the same issues, different figures, right? That he is just pull figures out of wherever it is, probably the same place he has he, this guy's liquor from. And I listen to this is about twelve minutes or so. This oh, oh, about that. This comparison he does between Keith Rowley and Kamala Prasad Bissessa to tell you that. At least on 12 points, Kamala beats Rowley hands down. But there are a number of things that he didn't mention there, which I would agree. Kamala Prasad Bissessa definitely beats Dr. Rowley. One, of course, being the fact that besides that of cabinet, she had 33 ministers. The largest cabinet in this country's history. Dr. Rowley had 23 members of cabinet, right? She had 33 members of, of her cabinet, 33 ministers to run a country of about 1.5 million people. At the same time that Barack Obama was president of the United States and ran a country of over 330 million people with a 23-member cabinet. So hands down, she beats Dr. Rowley there. She also beats Dr. Rowley with respect to the amount of firings, ministerial firings. The most amount of ministerial scandals. No other prime minister in this country's history, and I dare say the Caribbean history, has ever had to fire so many ministers in a short, such a short space of time. No other prime minister has ever had so many scandals to deal with, right? In a government and in the cabinet. So on that score, she also beats Dr. Rowley. When it comes to ministerial corruption, she beating Dr. Rowley there too. Going and coming. Dr. Rowley cast by miles. Most amount of corruption. Most amount of ministers before the courthouse, right? On allegations of corruption. And even out of up government, you still have members of your, of, your, of your team, your inner circle, who are before the court, out on bail, who are currently the subject of police investigations. Right? We forget to mention them things. Those on those scores, yes, she beaten Dr. Rowley hands down. But I decided to, to put a little comment, and let me just share with you just a little bit. Rowley, that yes, tires for water. Yes. The PNM telling you, don't use your hope. Saying talking about water and so let me uh, let me pull this up. So um so I decided just to share a little bit, right? So Dr. Rowley bought, we've spoken about this before, but it is worth repeating. Dr. Rowley bought three brand new ferries. Kamala Pasad Bisasa bought none with the highest energy revenues in the country's history. Dr. Rowley built five hospitals. Kamala built one with borrowed money. Money that she borrowed from the Chinese and which this administration under Keith Rowley has been paying interest and principal, I think, since 2018 for the last almost six years. And she took the loan to build a hospital, one hospital, in five years. Keith Rowley built five eh, in eight years. We continue. They love to talk about this is a taxing government and this government loves to tax, tax, tax. They said that from very early, right? And she loves to boast that when she was prime minister, she never raised, her government never raised a single new tax. Not one new tax was introduced, and yet still they were able to do this, that, the other, and the next. But they don't explain to the people where the money came from and the impact that it would have on the country's economy. Right? The little things they were doing behind the scene. Where the money come from, they ain't talking that talk. Right? But, and I've made the point before, and it is worth repeating. That, that is one of the biggest lies and, and um, false narratives that this government has been the worst when it comes to tax and taxing citizens, resulting in many persons claiming that this is an oppressive government, that they're oppressing the people, they're oppressing the poor, as if the government is only supposed to govern for the poor, right? There's only, only the poor people in this country the government is supposed to see about, and everybody else, right? Let me remind them. I've said it before and I will repeat it. This PNM administration under Keith Rowley has done more for tax relief than any other government as far as I am aware. Right? The things that they don't talk about. Even the PNM don't talk about it. But, it is, but I will talk about it. What tax relief did Kamala Prasad Bissessa provide for the citizens? She claimed in 2010 
put me in office and I will repeal the Property Tax Act. Never did that. She lied. In fact, in 2014, her $11 million Minister of Finance announced that they would be implementing the property tax, right, on a fees basis between 2014 to 2017. So they recognized the need for the property tax. Now she's coming back with this nonsense about get rid of the property tax and reintroduce the 2009 land and building taxes. She knows that cannot happen because that is, that is what they said they would do in 2010. And when they came into office, her first minister of finance, Winston Dukaran said that they encountered some legal hurdles, right, which prevented them from being able to re-implement or reintroduce the 2009 land and building taxes, right? And the moratorium on the land and building taxes, which Mr. Manning had put in place pending the implementation of the new property tax system. They brought that to an end in January of 2015 with finance, the finance bill number two. They did that. So the moratorium that said you're not, you're, you're not required to pay any form of property tax, whether it's the new property tax or the old land and building tax that existed since 19 long, 1914 or 1921, they are about to come forward, that Mrs. Prasad Bissessa is calling for the return of. That moratorium, which absolved citizens, property owners, from paying any kind of taxes on your property, to finance bill number two in January of 2015, while Kamala was still prime minister, she reintroduced it. She put an end to the moratorium and reintroduced the tax. But they don't talk about that. <laughs> but they wanted to go and when we were in office, it had no new tax. I mean, well, what tax relief did you provide for the citizens? So the lot said they removed back on 7,000 food items. What is the 7,000 food items? They can't tell you. I am certain there's not a single citizen in this country who goes to the grocery at any point in time in the month and buys 7,000 food items. So that didn't help anybody. In fact, there is that article that speaks to VAT or food flops. It did not work. The citizens didn't benefit. In fact, it made things worse. I don't have time to read that this morning. Right? So they remove VAT. They say offer 7,000 food items. What else did they do to provide any sort of tax relief for the citizens? They can't tell you. They provided tax relief for the energy companies. Tell them here what? Only come, come, come. Come and drill. Look for oil, look for gas. And any money that you spend to drill, whether you find oil, you find gas, or you ain't fine, write that off against your tax liability based on what you currently have. So all the projects that you have now that you're paying taxes on, right? All the oil and gas that you, you, have, you have based on previous drilling and you're selling, any taxes and royalties that you were supposed to pay to us on that, you could write that off with the money that you spend on trying to find new oil and new gas. So you had to pay nothing until 2024. Look at blessing. But they like to talk about Rowley like to make the rich richer. Yeah? So they put, they gave concessions to these energy companies to impact the country's revenue position. But they only wanted to spend, spend, spend. Spend, 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 you know? Yeah. Again, I asked the question, what other tax relief did you provide for the citizens of this country? None. Let me tell all you, remind you all what Keith Rowley and this administration did. First thing they did when they came into office, right, was to look into um, the personal allowance, right? The amount of money that you're allowed to earn for the year before you have to pay taxes. Three times in the last eight years, this government has increased the personal allowance. When Kamala came in in 2010, it was 60,000. When she left in 2015, it was still 60,000. So there was no tax relief there for the citizens. So if you were earning anything over $5,000 a month, you were required to pay income tax. Three times, Keith Rowley and, and Colman Booth increased it from $60,000 to $90,000. Resulting in a situation where if you're earning, they moved it from $5,000 to $7,500. So thanks to them, you have thousands, hundreds of thousands of citizens in this country who, under Kamala Prasad Bissessa, between 2010 to 2015, turning the little 5,000, 6,000, 6,000, 5, 7,000 were paying income tax and no longer paying income taxes and haven't been paying for a number of years. And for those who earn over 7,500, they now pay $7,500 less in taxes per year than they were paying income tax than they were paying under Kamla Prasad Bissessa between 2010 to 2015. Significant 
income tax savings, right? So we're looking at it anywhere between looking at about six hundred and 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 something dollars a month at least in savings that you did not have on the facade recession. Three times they increase that. They reduce that from fifteen percent to twelve and a half percent, not just on food, on everything, every. Thing on that you had VAT on, the only administration to reduce the rate of VAT since VAT was first introduced under the NAR between 1986 and 1991. Two and a half percent, right? Some people may say, well, what that, what that really doing for you? Well, it depends on what you're buying. Because you see, when you go to the, all of a sudden throughout the country now, it's only new cars. You go on the road, everything is vessel, they call us vessel nation, new cars all over. Two and a half percent on a three hundred thousand dollar vehicle. Two and a half percent on a four hundred thousand vehicle. Two and a half percent savings on a half a million dollar vehicle. Do the math and see how much money you're saving. You're building a house. You go to the to the um the hardware. You buy your material, your bricks, your cement, your galvanized, whatever else that you're purchasing. All of these things, vatable. They remove that on cell phones. They remove that on laptops, personal computers. Tablets, all of these things, right? Which under Kamla Prasad says, so you're paying tax. It never occurred to her, you know. Mm, yes. I given out tab, I given out um, laptops to these to these students. No means this. So it don't matter if it is your parents making 50, 60, 70, 90, 100 thousand dollars. It doesn't matter if at home you already have a laptop, you have an iPad and whatever else. Come, we're giving you still. Right? No consideration for that. No consideration. They say, well, let's remove the VAT on some of these items so some people can buy it for themselves. She didn't do that. Keith Rowley did that, right? Keith Rowley increased the minimum threshold, stamp duty threshold for first-time homeowners from 850000 to $2 million. So that if you're a first-time home buyer, you know, you come out of school, you went to university and thing, you get married and you're looking to start your family and you're looking for your first home. You have to save your down payment for your mortgage, your 10% and all of your other costs involved. But as a purchaser of a house, you have to pay stamp duty on the value of the, of the property. Keith Rowley says, hey, what? You understand your first home is a major investment and you're probably just starting out in the, in the world of work, so we will help you out. So if you're buying a house for $2 million, um, for $2 million or less, you're paying no stamp duty. So the money that you would have paid, and if you purchase a house, even if you buy a house for $2.5 million, for the first $2 million, you ain't paying no stamp duty on that. So you'll only pay stamp duty on the 500000 You know what savings that is? You must even that we talk about tens of thousands of dollars in closing costs. That is money that you could use to expand the house. Money that you could use to furnish the house, to paint the house, to do so many other things. Keith Rowley provided, and his administration provided that relief to first-time homeowners. Kamala Prasad Bissessa didn't do that. Right? Keith Rowley did that. He probably increased, and his government increased the tax deduction for deferred annuities for your personal pension plan that you would take out with the insurance company from fifty thousand to sixty thousand as an incentive. So you're saving for your retirement here, where we will increase the threshold. That results in an additional possible twenty five hundred dollars a year savings on income taxes. Keith Rowley did that. Did Kamala Prasad Bissessa do that? No, that was Keith Rowley who did that. And they have a host of other things that this administration would have done with respect to tax relief. So because they increased personal allowance from 60000 to 90000 all of these, well, government workers and so on, who would have received their back pay so far, the amount of money that you paid in tax on your back pay, if Keith Rowley had kept it at the, the personal allowance at 60000 as Kamala did, you would have paid a hell of a lot more money in taxes on your back pay than you would have than you did as a result of that increase. So to the other entities like the PSA and, and, and NUGFW and all of you who are still waiting on your back pay, just know that the amount of taxes you will pay on that back pay is significantly less thanks to Keith Rowley and the Dwen, Keith Rowley and the Square Peg and the Wrong Holy Engineer who took the decision to increase your personal allowance. You're getting to keep a little more of your back pay. Unlike when Kamala gave you the 14% and take back a chunk of that of the back pay, in taxes because she didn't increase your personal allowance. But we don't get them credit for that. We ain't talking that talk. Right? We ain't talking that talk. Let me remind them of some of the other things. Let me get it here again. Let's now hold on. 
Um, yeah, how you doing, Phil? Um, right. I just think keep running from a bit. Hold on. Let me get out. Some of the other things that you do, I forget to mention. Keith Rowley built two interchanges for less than what Kamala planned to spend on one. Right? We got the QREP interchange and we got the Digo Martin interchange. For less than 500 million. The UNC were planning to build the, the, the QREP interchange for 502. Right? 502. So we get two completed and we still have change to start the third one. Let me remind them. Oh, she's not on that one. Right. Get this here. This one. The Douglas talk about Kamla created 55,000 jobs. And that's the big boss, 55,000 jobs. What Keith Rowley is busy creating entrepreneurs, putting programs after program after program in place to create new employers, persons who will hire others to build your own business, right? But them talking about creating 55,000 jobs and put them back in office and they'll create 50,000 more. While she's talking about land for the landless and certificates of comfort, Dr. Rowley is giving out land leases. He's giving out starter homes. Create a program, 600 families where the state is going to build homes, proper homes, starter homes for 600 families. They may talk in that. For Sadi Sessa shut down the, the CCC and the youth camps. Dr. Rowley reopened it. In the last day, we've had over 1,600 graduates, persons who now have skills to go out and start their own business. The dog lion ain't gonna talk about that, but want to talk about, oh, Kamala beating Rowley hands down. Okay. I want to touch on something. In five years, Kamala gave out 95 laptops. Dr. Rowley gave out 78,000 in three years. Right? So if there's a distribution this year, it's quite likely that he's going to end up surpassing her. So in four years, he's going to give out more than she gave in five. But they don't talk about it. But I wanted to read an article here, right? Especially as I keep seeing persons talking about how this government is oppressive and they're oppressing the poor. And I was listening, just, I just happened to listen yesterday to a little bit of um, professor of misinformation and Captain Clueless on that radio station. And listening to their the supporters, some of their callers calling in to talk about this wicked government and they, they and how they, they oppressing poor people and all of these different things and they care about black people. I'm going to read this, right? When you ask people, how has this administration oppressed people in the last eight years? Two things they like to tell you. Talk about tax and oh, Rowley increased the price of fuel. And the price of everything went up. Let me just read this quickly for you. Let me read it. This is an article from The Guardian dated the 6th of February 2013. Entitled, Is Now the Time to Cut the Fuel Subsidy? I'm not going to read the whole thing. Entabling the 2013, 2013 eh? finance bill in the Senate two weeks ago, Finance Minister Larry Hawaii said he was seeking the Senate's approval to supplement the 2012 budget by adding $1.56 billion to fund urgent and critical recurrent expenditure to September 30th, 2012. You also sought the Senate's approval to vary the 2012 budget by $2 billion. Let me get this here. Where is it? Where is it? Mm -hmm. This is the $11 million Minister of Finance speaking here, right? He said there are two measures that can be implemented almost immediately that will ensure the country would be able to balance its expenditure and revenue into the foreseeable future. Let me read that again. There are two, he didn't say three, four, five, ten, two measures that can be implemented almost immediately that will ensure the country will be able to balance its expenditure and revenue into the foreseeable future. The two measures are the elimination of the fuel subsidies and the introduction of the property tax regime. 
This is the 11 million dollar minister of finance. The man they pay 11 million to leave work in FCB to become the minister of finance. Unheard of. The first and only time in this country's history you had to pay a man millions of dollars to become a minister. He said the elimination of the fuel subsidies will cut billions from Trinidad and Tobago's annual expenditure, while the introduction of a property tax regime will add billions in revenue. It should be obvious that these measures would be easier to implement when the economy is stable as it is now, as opposed to waiting until the economy is in decline to cut the subsidy and increase the tax. On the fuel subsidies, Mr. Hawaii allocated $4.45 billion of the country's total expenditure to fund the 2013 shortfall in the subsidy resale of petroleum products. What that means is that the allocation for fuel subsidy in the current fiscal year exceeds the total budget deficit for the last fiscal year. It also means that the government is spending more money subsidizing petroleum products than it is funding the Ministry of Education with an allocation of $4.28 billion or the Ministry of Health that is due to receive $4.36 billion. And this is the point that this administration has been making. The money that is being spent on fuel subsidies could go towards other things to benefit the citizens directly. But you heard the dog liar there talk about, oh, Kamala left the fuel subsidy in place because the oil and gas belong to you and you as a citizen should benefit from lower energy prices. I've made the point before, and it is worth repeating. The United States of America has more oil and more gas than Trinidad and Tobago ever had and ever will have. And their citizens don't get no subsidy, right? No, nobody's telling the, the president of the United States, well, the oil and the gas belong to the citizens and therefore they're supposed to benefit from lower fuel prices. You don't even hear the citizens saying that. I've never heard them say that. Yeah, they complain about the prices at the pump, but it is what it is. You don't see them at placard, right? On, on, on the parkway or, or on, on, um, in Manhattan talking about we, the, we own the oil and we own the gas and therefore we, we should be paying lower prices at the pumps. No, you don't see that. But it's only here they want to demand billions of dollars should be spent on subsidies. But Hawaii is telling you in 2013, remove the subsidy. Yeah, what I say, remove. He didn't say reduce, eh? Remove the sub fuel subsidy and implement the property tax regime. But you have Wade Mark telling you last week, Monday, or Monday gone, when we come back into office in 2025, we will remove the property tax. We'll remove the property tax. Right. But in 2013, the man who only paid millions of dollars telling you this is what you need to do. And if they had implemented it, removed the fuel subsidy and implemented the property tax, as he, how I said, back in 2013, when according to him, the economy was good. Today, we would have been in a different position because the billions of dollars that they would have spent on fuel subsidy, 2013, 2014, 2015, would have been saved, could have been spent on other things to improve the country's lot. Our exchequer account might not have ended up $33 billion in overdraft, permanent overdraft. But you see, the UNC has always been a populist party. That is how they govern, right? They are about, let me do things to bribe the people. So put money in people's hands just so. Yes, money for no work done. So they are about boosting transfers and subsidies, which is money for no work done. And they figure that is a good thing. They're, you know, the UNC's governance style is like, you know, it have somebody with diabetes. And they, they don't want to take tough decisions. So all of the men and women of letters that they have in their ranks will tell them, well, this is what you should do. Good economics equates to bad politics. What does that mean? That sometimes when you make the tough, you have to make the tough decisions. But understand, if you make the tough decisions and it affects the people negatively, at least for a while, they will hold you in mind. And the likelihood is that when the election come around, they will vote you out. But you still need to make the tough decisions. Because we're not, we're not governing for today and today only. You're governing for five years from now, ten years from now. So you need to put policies in place that you may not see the benefits today. But you would see it five years down, which is why between 86 to 91, when the NAR would have taken certain economic decisions that the population didn't like at the time and resulted in the death of the NAR, today 
almost four decades later, I hear people talk about, you know, mm -hmm, it's a good thing Robinson did put that in place, you know, and it's a good thing Robinson had to do this, you know, and it's a good thing Robinson had, but at that point in time, people were affected and they didn't see the benefit of it and they got rid of the NER. The PNM has always been the party to take the top decisions. The UNC is the party to kick the can down the road. Yeah, we ain't dealing with that now. Because we, we can't afford to get kicked out now because we ain't finished rob the treasury yet. We need about five to ten good years for teeth. Right? And then after that, we could make the top decisions. But let us safeguard ourselves and our pockets. So it's, par it's party before country. So I was giving you the analogy of how they govern. So they don't want to take the top decisions, even though they know you need to take the top decisions now to fix the problem. So it's like somebody who has diabetes, and the person bumps their toe, right? They know they have diabetes. You stop your toe, you get a cut. Your toenail raise up a little bit. Watch your thing, all right. Yeah, small thing. A day or two later, you realize, hmm, this thing ain't looking too good, you know. The UNC is the neighbor who will come over and, and, and you tell them, yeah, what, what going on with your toe there, girl? I bounce it. I'm thinking, I feel I'll go by the doctor tomorrow. I'm not even by the doctor for, forget that now. A small thing, you're going to waste your money to go by your doctor, you're going in the hospital to sit down and scrub bench for them to just give you an injection and a, and a, um, a prescription for Panadol. Hey, what to do? You need to get some shining bush, some zebra peak, um, fever grass, two leaves of guacano, right? And you boil that and you draw it and you drink it. And in about two, three days time, you clean out your blood and do a radar fix. When you know you should go to the doctor, but them telling you, nah, you're not to do that. Forget that. Don't go worry yourself. So you do that. And then a week later, you realize your toes start to get black and they're looking infected. You see, pus and all kind of thing. I so going by the doctor. Hey, going by the doctor. Forget that. Hey, what to do? I had a partner who had the same problem. All you need to do, put some soft candle on that, burn some soft candle on that. Yeah, what's the, um, the, the, the purple medici, medicine they put on it? Yeah, what do you call that? And you put some of that. And you get um what is he what's this this big leaf? Forget the name of it. You just take that and you wrap that, wrap the toe with some parchment paper and you tie up that. And if you could get some aloes and you drink that to clean out your blood, and you're good to go. And you know what you're supposed to do, right? But them telling you, nah, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, don't go by the doctor. Until eventually you wake up one night in a cold sweat, high fever, sepsis, and gangrene in your backside. And when you're going by the doctor now, do the exam, the doctor say, well, yeah, what well, we had to amputate. And we have to amputate just above the knee. But you see, if you had done what you were supposed to do early on, take the top, go by the doctor. When, okay, after you decide to take the first remedy that they give you on the table, and you realize the toes start to get black. If you had gone to the doctor then, maybe they might have just amputated the two or two. But you and see, kick the can down, and go, nah, try something else, do something else, right? Till you end up in the, point, in the position where they have to end up amputating your leg. And you almost die from sepsis and gangrene. That is how they operate. Don't take the tough decisions. When you could do it. When you're supposed to do it. Petrogen, hemorrhaging money. Losses. They know what they're supposed to do. Kevin Ramnarain came in 2014 in the Senate and talk about that and say, Petrogen in a mess. And if it is, we don't do this and we don't do that to fix it. But don't take the tough decisions. Leave it so, right? And let the problem get worse. And then when they lose office and the PNM comes into power now and the whole thing is a mess and they have to take the top decisions to fix it, yeah, the population, the PNM, wicked boy. Rowley is a wicked man. Rowley ain't care about poor people. Rowley this and Rowley that and Rowley must go. And Rowley only care about the, the 1%. And, and they're only too happy to come and feed you that foolishness, Right? So this government wicked. And I keep hearing people talking about the oppressing people and oppressing people. And so many things happening in the country. So many things happening to help people. But they're so focused. They're so myopic and only focusing on UNC propaganda. That they're not seeing all the things that are available for them. You know, because you know why they want to hear? We are introducing baby grant. Free money. Come and get $500 a month to make child. But then that was 10 years ago. So they need to up it to about eight or nine hundred dollars a month to make child. Yeah, that's what they want to hear. Come, we'll give you a color me orange. Put some money in for you. Just paint a building there and don't worry. We're gonna set up a program. You just have to come every day, write down your name to see that you were present, and you get a box lunch, 
and then you go home. But at the end of the month, you collect like, in a check. But just know, when you go and you cash that check, you have to pass $500 to this one. And pass $500 to that one for putting down your name on the list. That is what they like. Not to take the top decisions that are needed to fix the country. So they're cussing Dr. Rowley and cussing the PNM today for taking the top decisions that Larry Hawaii told you in 2013 needed to be taken. Two things. He didn't say diversify the economy. He didn't say increase foreign direct investment. He didn't say you need to stockpile foreign exchange. No, none of those things are no. Two things he said. Remove the fuel subsidy and implement the property tax regime. This administration reduced the fuel subsidy and they implemented the property tax regime. Now, of course, it has some teething problems. People going through, they're getting some of these notices where the figures are, are um, ridiculous. And a lot of times when it is that they go and they query it, they, they find out, well, okay, an error was made. But if they're happy every time somebody brings a notice that looking a little off to run on social media and post it up and see, look how they're wicked and they're trying to take people's property and so on. Clearly, some work needs to be done at the valuations department to fix these, because some of these notices really not making any sense. But the fact is you have recourse. It is not that you get this notice and either you pay or else. If you have an issue, you go and query it and more than likely they will tell you, well, okay, an error was made here. This is what you actually have to pay and you could do that. So to listen to these people come and tell you, put them back in office and they will remove the property tax. Kamla Pasad is telling you, as I read for you earlier, if it is that she's calling on the government to re-implement or reintroduce the 2009 land and building taxes. And as I spoke, I told you all before, and you see, this is the unfortunate thing. The tax rate under the old land and building tax law, 7.5%. 7.5%. Under the current property tax regime, it is 3% of the annual rental value. But she's telling you, go back to the old land and building taxes where the rate is 7.5%. But of course, they have been an, there's a new tax rule. The property values have been upgraded. So they're no longer operating on the property tax values from 1945 and 1950. The tax values, the value, the annual rental values have now, have now been reassessed to bring them in line with what currently obtains. So even if you go back to the 2009 land and building taxes regime, the fact of the matter is that the property values that would be used to assess is higher. So she is telling you must pay 7.5% instead of 3%. Because the supporters don't know about that and supporting her on that foolishness. So I want to ask Pasad Bisesa, if God forbid you come back into office next year and you decide you're going to go back to the old land of building taxes, are you going to scrap the, the, the methodology by which the properties are valued? So what you're going to tell the evaluator, well, here what now you need to undervalue people's properties? Are you going to change the, the, um, the rate? Because partly for them, if you use the term land and building taxes, it's acceptable. But if you use the word property tax, they have a problem with that. The waterfront ilk. The waterfront ilk. That's how they operate. So I am saying, we cannot afford to put these people back in office in 2025. Because they want to come together to thief. That is what it is all about. Gary is saying that he will not sell his soul for government. What? Okay, you're willing to sell your soul. Do you have anything else you're willing to sell, Gary? Anything else? Because now that Philip decide, last week he cussed in here. He's saying, if it is you, get back with Kamala, well, he out. This week he changed his mind. In the space of about three to five days, he decided, well, all right, he could work with you now. He had a problem with you. He loved you again. Right? All they could live together under one big house and hug up and kiss. And everything good. And the rest of the citizens, we just sit back and watch in this soap opera. And these people want us to believe they have the country's best interest at heart. Are we supposed to vote for that? Well, they can't be serious. You cannot be serious. And they have support. That's the thing. Well, we do, well, I don't know how St. Joseph went to work out because my understanding is Gary wants to contest St. Joseph. And the Roberts also wants to contest St. Joseph. The NTA has called for um, nominations for all 41 seats. The PEP has also well announced that this week they're supposed to be doing that. And the UNC says that they will be closing off, um, they will be closing off nominations. I, I think sometime, as Brian was telling me, I think middle of April, right? For 40, all 41 seats. So how that working? Well, yeah, so it's all that yet, but all you're talking about, we coming together. Okay. Recipe for disaster. The alternative to the PNM is chaos and confusion, right? 
chaos and confusion. We don't know how else to say that. Well, let's see what it Anyway. Anyway, a word to the wise is sufficient. I just want to say to the hierarchy of my party, there is work to be done. All right? We need to have more public meetings. Last week was good. This week almost finished. We didn't have none. I'm hoping that next week we will hear about. But we need to ramp up social media work. Right? Because I see kick out the PNM post up a picture if Dutish was a party. Post up a picture from a post from the Ministry of Works and Transport or the work that they're doing in Manzanilla with respect to that road, that problem. And they put in some, some infrastructure to take the water, the excess water from the earthen roads back out to the sea so that the road it wouldn't damage the base of the road. So kick out the PNM decide to put up this, this picture and talking about them. Um, Look at this bridge that Rohan said and build and how much water that could hold and all kind of, of not understanding the purpose that that is supposed to serve. And they're sharing that like wildfire, right? And to the uninitiated and those the intellectually lazy who don't understand nothing about these things, running with that. People who support it. I saw before, before I opened the lines, there was one more thing I wanted to touch on. I didn't get to, I, I can't find it to play it. A lady from Grandy. Since she's done a couple of videos where she was talking about, apparently she attended the UNC's crime talk meeting in Grandy the other day. And she had an, an issue where involving her son and the police. Apparently she said the police beat up her son, they rough up her son and so on. She wrote to the commissioner of police. She said she wrote a letter to the minister of national security. She wrote to the prime minister and she didn't get redress and, and the like. And she went to this, to the UNC crime talks. And she raised the matter, and apparently Kamla Posadi says I sent some lawyer to talk to her about the matter, to assist, see how they could assist. And just for that, this lady is so grateful to Kamla Posadi says She decided that she wants to do these lives to talk about it, you know, because she voted for the PNM in the last election, and the PNM was her party, and she never met Kamla before, and, and, and this lady just come and she helped her, and she's so grateful to Kamla Posadi says and now she's singing Kamla's praises, right? And this government don't care about poor people. And this government wicked. And this government all kind of things. Same government that she voted for in the last election. The same government that she has been voting for. Same party she has been voting for. All because Kamala sent a lawyer. Right? To assist her and her son. Now you see you sent a letter to the commissioner of police, the prime minister and the minister of national security. And you didn't get the redress you were looking for. So what the prime minister supposed to do? Pick up the phone and call Lila Christopher and say, well, um, this lady sent a letter here claiming that, the, that your officers beat up her son and need you to suspend these officers. No investigation, nothing, right? Just go with what it is that she said. That's what she expects. So now she praising up and, and kick out the PNM and other UNC Facebook profiles using these clips now and promoting this. Look at, look at a PNM person. Watch how they, they, they thank in Kamala for her help. Rowley and help the lady, and Heinz and help, but look, Kamala, come and help. When in 2011, when they had this state of emergency and the police beat up and, and lock up 8,000 young black men like your son, Kamala sent any, any um, attorneys to help them? Hmm? Where was her concern for the young black men like your son? Where was her concern for them then? When her attorney general say lock them up and we're going to find the evidence later, where was the concern? Mm? which was probably one of the reasons why you chose to vote for the PNM in 2015 and 2020. But now your son has found himself in that situation. And because you find that you didn't get the redress that you were looking for, these things take time and they need investigation. Kamala son, a lawyer, your lawyer probably come and talk to your son and tell your son ABC, X, Y, and Z, and you're happy. So now day after day, you just doing lie to talk about how Kamala helped you. And you're so grateful to Kamala and Kamala this and Kamala that and Kamala that. See, there's the problem. The little things. But see, that's why I say they're populist. So now this lady spreading the gospel of why you should vote for Kamala. And she done vote for the PNM because police beat up her son. That had nothing to do with the prime minister. Nothing to do with the minister of national security. Right? Nothing to do with them, you know. There's a process to be followed. But just because Kamala Mama guy here. And look at you see simple things that it takes for people to, to turn, right? 
Simple things. I say no more on that, folks. I'll see if I find the video and I will play it. And this is the thing that I don't understand. The police beat up somewhere by this. We don't know. The prime minister don't know the story. He needs to hear both sides. You send a letter. He cannot call the, the, the commissioner and tell her to, um, to suspend the officers or to fire them. That is not how it works. But well, you vex with the government because police beat up your son for whatever reason. And now you out there, you're an advocate for Kamala Prasad B. Sessan telling people don't vote for the PNM. That you were a strong PNM supporter, but no more. You don't want to hear nothing about Rowley. And you don't want to hear nothing about PNM. From henceforth, Kamala all the way. Right? Just because she sent a lawyer to help you with your son. Just Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. Yes, good morning now. Morning. Something on faithfulness. Yes, you do something wrong? Ask a question. So quick to jump ship. Mm-hmm. We your parents support that? Because I'm for the first time. It's been a perfect no. But sorry, cannot get involved in daily activity. Right? Mm -hmm. You have to ask the police what it's nice to do. Look at Zek in Balsi, okay, with the House of Horrors. Mm -hmm. Its body was found, okay? Pain them and get, get bleed. In hell. Can pain them? It's pain them. You have ASP and it's psychics. Hmm. I'll make my child not his mind. If you do for your child, right, for nine months, his habit, how could the girl of the know? How can it come into the world if I'm thinking about to do and you make a son? Hmm. Okay. I make my child. I make him mine. You blame Heinz for murder? Hmm. Did Heinz kill your child? Did Father Roger bury your child back in the yard? The only thing it came to light so they had family fight. If there was no fight, would Hannah death be brought to light? How come it's not being blamed for that? How come it's, it's the government fault that Hannah was killed? Who killed Hannah? Mother, father, brother, sister. And look carefully. I see it quiet. The curry could quiet. You know why? It's their own. The baby was killed by the parents that went south. Right? Blunt post trauma. Again, you went to quiet. You know why? Because it's their own. You are my brother who came out of jail from murder. Mm -hmm. You went to quiet. You were their own. How convenient. The tenant people brought each other again. Or each other out of jail. Or each other kill the baby. Justice in this land is for yellow. Justice is for you and people only. And what is this little boy who said Negroes must die? He should be in jail and expelled in jail. You know why? Can we trust with my children? Kill me, kill, kill it any word, kill them. If it was a Negro child, would he be so lucky to be in school still? I can't put it in school bag, should be watched. Lunch bag must be watched. The potential threat to children. He's a young militarist, and those things will learn at home. Kill, kill the end people. He was in his bed, he'd be behind bars. But yet again, yellow rules, and parent is nobody. Bye-bye. Thank you. So let me just play this a little, a little. So you see, if they could attack him, they will come after they could come after me. So that's to show this government don't really care. All them care about is to be in power. To be in power, and they're talking about they have the the, the, the country's best interests at heart. And to see 
it's strangers that turn and help me. Imagine that this woman, Miss Kamala Passad, says, I don't even know this woman from nowhere. All I know she's the opposition leader, and that woman reached out to help me. Not as an opposition leader, you know, but as a mother. She felt my pain and decided to help me. I felt shame. I feel hurt. I feel like I cry. I'm glad for the helping, and I want to tell you, ma'am, thank you very much for helping me. For deciding to send some lawyers to help me fight that matter. When my son was wrongfully beaten and charged. Thank you, ma'am, for your help. And to think I go and vote, put my finger next election to vote for these people who don't give a ass about me, who don't care about my generation, my son. Look, right now, my son has been pain because it's two set of legs he gets. He had to go to work in pain, come home in pain. And who cares? Nobody cares. That's why the officer chest buff. And he's saying, you see the commissioner I had him to take on? And he planning for when this, this guy done, what he would do from what he wouldn't do? And all he's trying to curb crime. But this too, what this officer committed in front of my eyes is a crime. The same way we just have to go to the police when somebody, you know, commit a crime towards us. I went to the government, the commissioner of police, I write her letter. I cry out to the minister of national security. I cry out to the prime minister. And I'm sure that my videos would have reached in front of them. And nobody ever paid me no mind. They leave us out in the open so that anybody could come and kill us. But thank God they reach out on the papers, on the express, so that it at least Sandy Grand and is reach out there into the world for people to see. So anything happened to us, they know who to lock up, who the fingers will be pointed at. So they, they you know, so they, 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 everybody heads out a turn. But why have to reach to that? We as citizens of China and Tobago, and the people we vote for and put in power are supposed to protect us. At least come and investigate, swift investigation. Because the crime happening in front of the station and it have cameras. And this young man, this officer caught us, he hiding behind the police service, hiding behind the badge, and committing his gruesome act on people, doing them wickedness. That is not policing. How many complaints have we heard about police brutality, right? But now you have become an advocate for Kamala Prasad Bissessa. And UNC Facebook page is only too happy to be sharing this. What's the, what's the, let me see what's the title. Grandy Mother thanks Kamala Prasad Bissessa for assistance after anti-crime jobs. And this is just one of several videos that she has done singing Kamala's praises. Right? We're going to come on. Just because a lawyer come and talk to your son? Jenny. Hello. Hi, morning, Dominic. Good morning, Jen. Good to all the persons locked on to access stubborn things. I, I can understand a mother and the pain she would have felt, or any mother, having witnessed whatever she said she witnessed, I wasn't there. But if you're going to take that situation, and put it at a national level, saying that because Kamala Prasad Bissessa got a lawyer for you, hmm. and you would have written to the Prime Minister, who's not a police, because I'm sure the letter would have been sent to the right agency. So he's supposed to take it up with those other agencies, the police service, yeah, the police complaint department, and of course there's a process. So if you're using that now to say because Kamala gets a lawyer for you, and what will the lawyer do? Come and talk to your son and ask him the details. Does that mean to say it's going to go further? Hmm. But if you're happy and comfortable, <clears throat> which I guess a mother would be that somebody actually listening to me based on what she said. But if that is going to inform your decision in voting in a party, in this country, in 2025, that has the history of the UNC and PP, 
then you take in a personal internalized decision. Hmm. And then Lala Dal sing and them say you could buy we for chubby and doubles or water, whatever it is, and how we push it. Those are the things that us make them sell about us. Because they could sell lawyer for you, that is okay. But because of that, you could have vote for them. After you hear what they did to this country between 2010 and 50, when we hear the kind of leader come from Pasadis, other than the drinking and so long drunk, all the corruptions, people in she own party say she was corrupted. We hear people in she own party involved in human trafficking. We see what they did to all the camps and them in this country, the largest youth camps for girls to go. And I could go on and on and on. And because they give you a cell lawyer for you to talk to your son, you advocate to vote for the UNC. What that says, that you could fall for anything, again, I understand your pain, because a mother, you will feel that. But you going to throw everything on the window to not advocate for people to vote back that diabolical party under Kamala Pasalbi Sessa. Put that on we. The woman who wanted America to put sanction on this country, the woman who right next to she's saying, no, what is she MP and then before the court and a million dollar bid for fraud? Can we want to go back in this country, Miss Lady? Hmm. Did you feel it for the thousands of African youths, their mothers and their fathers and their brother and sister? When Inspector Singh was throwing them behind a van and said, the girl orders, lock them up from an attorney a general from a UNC. Lock them up, you go find things to charge them with after. Mom, did they really hurt you? Did you feel care? Or is it it wasn't your child? And again, I understand your pain. But what about the pain of those mothers? In, in the parliament, um, John Sandy, I think it was, and even Paul Richards, they would have given a figure. We didn't even know so much. Mm. I think Paul Richards said about 7,000 or 8,000 African youths. And John Sandy was in um, National Security Minister at the time. I think he said about 8,000, if I'm not mistaken. Miss Lady, where was you there to advocate that to get the um, UNC out and put a proper government? But again, we just take if a minister and smile at you and in voting for you then. If the minister passes you straight, I ain't voting PNN. If you ain't get a PNM jersey, I ain't voting for PNN. If I ain't get a plate of food or a box of food or a sandwich, I ain't voting PNN. I'm going on to vote UNC. Really? You know the UNC supposed to say? Even if I ain't get the roti and they do me all kind of thing, can I still me mother? I don't have to get a jersey. Kamla is my savior. All I know, she's Indian, and we have to get out here. That is how they us think. And we, on the other side, want to sell out my country. It's easy, because you get a lawyer for yourself. I understand the pain, but Miss Lady, what you're doing is not right. And before I go, I just want to say, the you can that Kamla beside my sister, who so care about children, shut down. It opening back. El Dorado Girls Youth Camp. The largest youth camp in this country in the Caribbean. It is opening back in September. Mm. Kamala care. Kamala so care for the young people. That's why the PNM went in Parliament to make sure the law is put so that no big old man, hard back man, can marry no 11 year old child. Kamala who loved the children sent two scholars in the parliament to argue for the books. And Dr. Rowley and his government persisted. Now a child could remain a child, go to school, but all the programs that have under the Ministry of Youth Development National Services, all the programs that have Ministry of Education and all that, they could go to school and get education, do a trip. And when they are the age where they're an adult, based on what the law say, if they choose to marry a man who is 50 or 60, that is the choice. But no more will a 50 and 60 old man be climbing the chest and only 11 year old girl in this country again. Thanks to Dr. Kikis of Royal Independence.
had Kamala had she way or was she in office? That law would have remained right there. And we love the children. Why they talking about the body they find in Val in the backyard at Hannah Matura? They go talk about that. Mm. Because you know it ain't happening in Lavantel. It ain't happening in wrong African people. They're silent on that. Why not so silent on certain things when people of Indian descent do it? But when African people do it, it's all over. It's the mother, the father, mm. children, father, no father. You know, just make children sterilize them, putting in the water. That is what they just do when talking about African people. Like if they don't understand, we have an equal right here, like every other race in this country, the biggest country. But what we ask them for is equity. And we will get equity because we are not a people to bow we head and walk away just so we don't stand in firm. Our ancestors did it. They, su- they survived shattered slavery. And we will continue to endure and we will do it. And persons like that lady, again, understand your pain. Stop selling me out. Guys are selling me out. Keep that thought to your head if you want to vote UNC. Don't come to influence people to vote UNC because they get a lawyer for you. They ain't do nothing for nobody else. They do something for you. And because of that, you selling them to tell other people, vote for them because they get a lawyer for you. Do they get a lawyer for the whole country? You talk about a personal experience and coming out to sing praises for Kamala for Saudi Center. I want to ask you before I leave, mommy, because I understand your pain. Why you vote for PNM in 2015 if it's so love Kamala? Dominic, you have a blessing. Thank you, Jen. All is forgiven, all is forgotten. Yeah, all the wrongdoings that they did, that would have prom- prompted you to vote for the PNM in 2015 and 2020. Throw that on the back burner, because what matters, she's not a lawyer for you to help you. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Romain. Good morning, morning to all the, the bunkers and the listeners of this program. Now, I heard you just played um, a clip with some woman and she started to get um, physically assaulted by an officer or something, right? Yes. And she does, she got so disenchanted that she decided that she wants the, the population to understand that the Dr. Keith Rowley administration and Melissa Hines don't care about the welfare and the safety of the citizens because this officer was really wrong and such and such, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Madam, number one, right? The situation with you, with your son and the officer, that is not how to do with no politics. But we know that you want to use that as a political tool to influence the people in this country that the government don't care about the, the, the citizens. So we don't know it's politics you play because for you to come and make such statements and say that you're not voting for this administration because your son was assaulted by a member of the protective services in this country, right? And you feel that bringing back the UNC in this country is going to solve all your worries. Because why? You're, because you are able to, to get a lawyer to represent you in the event of what transpired. Madam, we sympathize with you. But stop using that as a political tool to influence other people. And is that what you do? Right? You don't want to talk about, about your son um, saying your son was assaulted. Okay, we understand, we, we sympathize. But what does it have to do with, with you voting in an election? What does it have to do with you voting? So you think if UNC go out there and the same thing happen, it will change? Oh, God, it makes sense now. That was always here, Dominic. The UNC opposition parties in this country does use the illiteracy and the ignorance of the of the the, 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 the illiterates in this country to rile them up. You understand the misinformed people, right? Because for you to come and make such statement, then you misinform. 
politics is politics. Crime is crime. Right? But you, you want to come under the cloak of, 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 of this assault that they have got that have to your son to, 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 to shed light or give people the perception that this government wicked and the bad and the U.S. is the savior of the country. So what we to realize, voting out that government and bring in one like the UNC could have stopped the crime situation in this country? Really? What of the 2010 to 2015, 2011, 2012, 2013, then three years on the Like somebody have amnesia, they tend to forget what transpired. Right? So they're using crime and murders in this country as a political football. That is why they refuse to support any legislation in regarding the crime. Has anyone sit down and analyze and think that why the crime and murder statistics in this country skyrockets? Anytime the UNC the opposition. But then again, we had a former commissioner of police came out in the joint select committee and said that the UNC opposition was funding criminal activities in this country, hoping that they will get an opportunity to give back into government in 2020. But the plan failed. So they're coming back now with the same rhetoric this tomorrow. You understand? And I really hope that Trinidadians and Tobagonians, but Tobagonians especially, because all you not understanding the reality that these people, all they want to do is to get into government or in power. Right? That is all them focusing. We must go to the PNM, eliminate PNM of the history of Trinidad and Tobago. That is what they plan to do. They always say, who have eyes to see will see, and who have ears to hear will hear. Hmm. Yesterday, Dominic, I sat, well, I already listened, I cannot listen in and out of what I said yesterday evening on that radio station. Right? And much sit down reading some um some story from the express with some little girl get a top the first in house and she got rape or whatever 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 mm -hmm. well here yeah, now what they say about this administration is what they get to say about them you understand the world yeah i don't know it has some people i'll say once you see, once you don't read and you don't understand the politics in this country, I will use for you that misinformation and propaganda. That is the UNC playbook. And you see, um, so she let us have a playbook because she's money for them. Yes. One blame or um, blame Kamala, blame Kamala, blame Kamala. Well, I say today, blame blame Kamala. Vote on UNC, vote on UNC, vote on UNC. And the same playbook again, we will vote on UNC. Because all these are this grace dominate to this country. Right? All they had nine years to make things different in the crime in this country. What you all did? All this started to bad mouth the government and bad mouth this and send sanction here and 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 and, and, and speak this one and, and it's about party and before country. I didn't say I'm, I'm about the, the, the citizen, but you're going to come now to tell me in 2025 that I must put you back there because you are the answer to crime in this country. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I wonder if they want it. Look, next two months, we'll make it 10 years since Dana Sitan demise. 10 years later, up to now, we can't hear who do what and do what, what, what. But you want to come and tell me what is the answer to the to 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 go to 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 go? Really? Really? And before I go to this murder, this girl, but you don't find it by the same day. And mm -hmm. 
That is an ideal, right? Who is here to put that area? Khadija. Did you hear anything coming from, from any statement coming from her since then to now? I, I heard that interview she did with one of the radio stations yesterday. I think it was I-95. But again, you know, she would try to find a way to put to bring the government into that position. Exactly. That is my point. You understand? Because Val saying, you see, this is, all, this is my problem in this country. And the media in this country have a pivotal role to play in that. Because this, what you would have found in this in Val saying, they ain't yet it it gone under the cafe because you know why? It's one of them people. It's people who look like them. The little child who the little baby who died down in the south with the birth first trauma. Not a protest <laughs> regarding that. Huh? Who died from a birth first trauma from one of the relative or whatever thing. Not a protest, not a protection, nothing. Right? But only want to come and talk. If it's down Lavantil or the East West Corridor, predominantly African based areas, and those things happen, the media will blast it all over and deem all them Africans and them, them thing and, there, and East West Corridor and thing and P and them area, they come and make this and they start. But there's only it's in St. Augustine, but it's a predominantly UNC based area. You won't hear nothing about that. Two toes are dies it, they're going to under the carpet. And I still want to hear the the the, the board, the Alicorn board of this St. Christian Stevens College with this little schoolboy. I want to know if he is going to get the same judgment that Trivian, um, this girl from Dongan Separia West School, who, who get expelled last year. I want to know if he could going to get that similar fit because in discipline and racial rant, but in the same way, you know. So up to now, the board of the African school child would have made such remarks. You know, I hear the Mahasaba, you know, I hear the, 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 the IRO, you know, I hear the opposition, you know, everybody jump out. You remember, Dominic, when, it, when the Swiss social was in, in government and some girl make some video and she this I think I had the prime minister uh, tab now or whatever she disrespected and they went and they hung on this girl mm -hmm. and they forced her to apologize right so why is the problem now and I say I believe each other now are blaming who we listen to the, the parents and the opposition leader because if you as a as an opposition leader could say them thing where you get, at least I have a name of my ancestors. Where you get a name from? That of a slave master. Eh? The black man on the other side. You have the Oreo now. The most of the country is in the PNM. Eh? So where you expect that like you as a, a leader of a party and in the country to make such statements and then you want this cushion to what? The world. Children learn what they what, what they what, what they see and hear, you know. Yeah, then, but then again, that is UNC logic for you. People before I go, this is 2024. And I and I over a year, over a little bit about 30 months from now, or 14 months from now, 15 months around it, it's going to have a general election. See the focus. Dr. Rowley is going to make a hat trick in this country. As we after Dr. Eric Williams to win three consecutive elections back to back. Steady focus, stay focused, and let us debunk all the foolishness and the lies and propaganda that the UNC is portraying in this country. And at the night of whatever the election is called, we will say, yes, we did it again. And the country is going forward. Right now, Kamala. Is holding on to political life right now. So she tried all tricks in the book to see who she could hold on to, whether it's NDA or Gary. But I hear she the grapevine, Dominic, that Philip and Gary go kiss up and make up just to get into the government. Hmm. And from when they get in, they really back to start. But I tell you, they ain't no way. And I hear Julian trying to. 
get uh, two hands in the, in the political arena. Mm. So I want just to give her that support as well. If she get the nod, we bring her to one east. We don't focus on by Tyra San Juan and we get them around and point up here. That is my take on it. I'm on a good program, I'm not going listen. Thank you, sir. Will says that that was one stop to think that if not for general election 2025, would UNC Kamala reach out to her? <laughs> the woman, if you want to vote UNC, that's your right. I'm just saying, so true. But it just goes to show the little things that it would take for people to switch. People who claim to be um, hardcore PNM supporters, and just because the UNC do something for them. So she's not a lawyer. You got redress, but you're grateful just because she's. So it's simple things like that they might do, you know. They carry in, they, they give a hamper or two, or they get a little 10 days job for somebody. And here the person will say, See, I went and I talked to I talked to the MP, and the MP ain't do nothing for me. And I went and talked to Miss Kamala and watch. I get a hamper, I get a work for my son. You really don't care. Mm. Mm. It's them same so feds Hello? that cost us the election in 2010. Yes, sir. Good day. Hi, uh, good day, Brian Dominic. Hello? Yes, boss. Go ahead. Yeah, man. Good. Good editorial. You know, I read that I'm not telling black people have a price on their head, you know. Hmm. We will sell this tool for a chubby and our doubles. Just like how some of them in the United States now saying that Donald Trump is the best thing to say, spread. You see some of them have ups at his back in Donald Trump? Yep. Yeah? Despite what Donald Trump treated black people over the years, along with his father, everybody knows the racial discrimination his father, Donald Trump, how they deal with black people. Particularly with um, um, this program he has, with this special um, reality show. Where you say you're fired? Yes, we are practice. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't have to use the open, but that's a different story. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, black people have a price in the head. Look at the treated doctor in the PNM in Tobago. Hmm? It's really, really sad and unfortunate. And let's talk about this country and this government thing. You know, just Months ago, to go find thousand dollars and money to go to three thousand dollars set. Yeah, I just came here to costume for ten thousand dollars. Hmm. They found the money end of it. Mm -hmm. But when I have something like paying your bills or paying your your, your taxes, the government is the worst thing. Yes. Yeah, and last year too, don't forget. Remember Christmas time? Mm -hmm. Everything was packed out. Yep. Supermarket. Balls. And let's go back further. October. October carnival in Tobago. People found money to go and travel in Tobago. Hmm? Jump back. But now they're complaining. And let's continue with things that never happened. We've got no bad with it. Well, all I can say, if I want to go back to your county yellows, so be it. Mm. Because I don't know what else the government did for you. Hmm? The Minister of Foster Command has some special programs for you. Hmm? One of the best programs since, I think, since free to share education. Come to the program, get your land, even get in money, provide that you train properly. And you're starting off just so. Dominic? Yes, sir. We are on for And I'm hoping, with, me, with, with the spoken program coming, I hope that the government will visit mm. it. We better be rapidly. No matter how we jump, I jump, we will really start that, 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 that transit is first. We really need it. Mm. I'm making a holiday. And by the way, when I should travel down south? It's been a while. Deep south. Uh, it will be the first to see all the different um, 
Nous ne pouvons pas nous faire de nous 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 You too, sir. Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, Deep South. I see there's a gentleman who used to advocate for the PNM as well. In fact, he had a, a talk show on 91.9 not so long ago. I don't know what has happened, what falling out he has had with the party, the MP, certain um, councillors, but I see now he, he, he recently. He's taken to attack him, Juliet and, and Jenny. Again. Right? Yes, Carla. Yes, the one you best said, CNM, look at them best milk and pampers. Get up and get. If your child do wrong, stand with him, but correct him. Kamala won votes for 2025. But when she is done with that woman, guess what? She wouldn't cover up her bottom with a piece of toilet paper. So, sister, you tell yourself for a drop of chubby and a half use double. Don't cry, you know? Because when you pepper burn your backside, water will not suffice in your pain. You are treated to your own self. You said you, you are for sale. Go on, bro. And tell yourself, you might get a sense. You are shameless, shameless, shameless. I'm not your user. Right? Look at the, 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 the little boy, right? Who cursed Negro people? Where is she? And she loves so much? Hmm. If you love children, Kamla, right? That boy said, kill people. Why the hell are you? Quiet. He's a threat to people's children of African descent. What about Boo Man? Hmm? How are you quiet? Where well, all these people have so much big voices? I know but quiet. Do they just quiet? Do they quiet? Why are they quiet? He threatens children in school. Threats are against the law. You're old enough to know that when you sit in, a, in an open space, you should be charged. Why he sit in school? Because he's curry? Mm. How convenient. It is wrong. Those children have to watch their back because I can't trust you. And in the you know what? Look what African child do, my child. He could be armed and dangerous. But you won't think quite about that because they're old. No, people do not what you and see. Don't fall for their ploys and tricks. Take the wool out of your eyes. Come into the sun and see you are not for sale. And before I go, God might bless you. I bless you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I speak well over you and every African child, Jenny, and all who take part in the show. Listen, I bless you. I speak well over you. Great will be a portion. I call businesses and homes and spiritual wealth over you. So I'm going to again. Bye-bye. Thank you. <coughs> One says the lady should encourage her son and his friends to get off the block, utilize various programs for the youths, the young people in the UNC are joining the program. That is very true. Very, very true. A lot of the programs that the government has currently put in place, well, it's for everybody. But check and see who are the persons who are making use of it. Right? So it's enough that, it's not enough that we have to be dealing with battling the, the, the UNC now, NTA slash PEP. Whoever else wants to join that on Holy Alliance. But when it is that you have people who support the, and, and, our, and our constituency, like Sandy Grandi, how many people's minds can this lady turn? Yes. When she tell him, you see, watch. 
I call, I, I send a letter to, to the commissioner, and I reach out to Heinz, and I reach out to Rowley, and they may take me on. And Kamala come up here and share a meeting, and I just went and talk and sing and watch the woman. One time, the woman sent a lawyer to help my son. And other people say, yeah, but you ain't lying, okay, yeah. Yeah. Rowley and them don't care about nobody. It was a 1% son. Yeah, he would have seen, he would have done send thing, and wherever, wherever, he'd have called the commissioner, and this and that would have happened. That's how it is that. So I was mentioning the gentleman from down deep south who is now is now attacking Jenny and and now and 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 Juliet. Yeah, I know what what the issue is, you know. But this is somebody who I who based on me listening to some of his lives before was a strong advocate for the PNM, and it seems no more. But they have followers and they have supporters, and this is the things that we need to guard against. The little things. Come look or do what? Our supporters remain in faithful. Don't forget, 2015, the night of the election, she abandoned them and the complex and went home. While they waiting for her to come and give them some kind of consolation as a result of the electoral law, she, she couldn't care less. Today, the very same people who she disappointed. Keep in faith with her now. They love her too bad. They want her to stay there. They don't want anybody else to replace her. She must stay there. Right? Despite all that she do to them, no matter how many times election laws or whatever, they keep in defeat. Only you care about nobody. You care about the black man. He in this and he in that. The Prime Minister running blood to water, coming up with programs every day to assist. You are not taking advantage of it. The caravan going from constituency to constituency. They come into you all and you know, come and sign up. We are not telling you all to come in. You could come in, but we're not waiting for you all to come in to sign up. We come into you, into your into your, your neighborhood, into your community, for you to sign up. We bring in the people to talk to you, to tell you the benefits. Just, I'll be telling you in advance, just come with this document, that document, and when we come on the day, we sign in up and get you involved. And even that too hard for you to do. Even that too hard, I don't know what else all I want them to do. So, well, yeah, what? when we come in, we, we bring in a jersey with some money. Yeah, and then you take the with the money and then you sign up and you don't turn up. So how much is you expect your, your lot to improve? It was the same thing with the Laventon Technology Institute. And Mr. Manning, where they turned the old rumbon into the institute to help who? The young people in that area. Did they make use of it? No. They rather run across the the uh, the highway, risk their lives to get a cup on the highway to run across two lanes of highway to jump on the back of a garbage truck. To rummage to garbage to see what you could get so you could throw a big plastic bag of garbage on your back and run back across two lanes of the highway, risking your life to go and do what? Day after day. Meanwhile, you have the opportunities. The caravan came into the beta, came into Silots to give you all the opportunities that the government created. Even if you can't read and write, they have things in place to help you. You ain't doing that. You ain't interested in that. Now, I want to run across, get up early in the morning and run in the, in the labas. To give talking points to who, right? So that Kamala Prasad be says, and you and see, 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 that's a, that's a DPNM, they, that's what you have, that's what you offer their people. Look at which is running in the, in, the, in the dump to pick up garbage. Look who chasing garbage trucks. So you can get them that talking point. What else? Did you can you leave the horse to the water, you can't force the horse to drink. What else you want the government to do? They're giving you money to start a business. You know what that? You want them to come and hold it by this coffee and I can't force it? Open back CCC. Come and get a skill. Something. Anything. We're giving you. We're paying for you to go and learn agriculture. We're giving you the land. We're giving you money. We're giving you a house. No. If you don't care about nobody, you want to do light to cost the pain and cost Rowley and call radio station and bad talk Rowley and Rowley this and Rowley that and Rowley must go. And they only care about the one percent, right? Opportunities that Kamala Prasad Sasa never gave, never offered, exist today. We are studying that. We are about to talk Rowley and the PNM and put back Kamala because you know why? We want Baby Grant and we want Color Me Orange. Well, go ahead, put them back. After the PNM has repaired the economy, never mind the fact that the economy in a mess and nothing in running and nothing in working and all kind of thing. The IMF report that came out we deal with that and so. Which speaks to the management of the economy. This is the second consecutive year. Don't forget last year, the same IMF gave glowing, a glowing report 
just as they did this year. What did the UNC do last year? They tried to pour cold, cold water on it to tell you, well, it's only because um, at the Ukraine Russia war that the price of oil and gas went up, and that is why they get a, the government got a windfall and they was able to do this and do that. But it wasn't for that. So it's not, not because of anything that they did. It's because the price of oil and gas went up. What did the IMF say? The IMF praised the government for the way that they managed the windfall. But they didn't do what the UNC would have done. Hey, we get, we get more money than we thought we'd get by. Let me come up with some here, brain scheme. Let me think of some big, grandiose project we could spend the money on so we could chief. This government didn't do that. They used the money to pay down debt, to reduce the, com the country's debt profile. These are the things that they did, right? To invest in the people, to create programs, so to help people, to help themselves. You can see in doing that. That is why the IMF, but up to now, you see, they ain't saying nothing about it yet. Wait, they'll be coming soon. Brian. Good morning, sir. Morning, sir. Morning to your listeners and callers. Dominic, I'll tell you something. The issue is, and the problem I should see, mm. is that print media has been bought out. Mm. 100%. So a lot of these things that you speak about, and other people speak about ain't making papers. Now, I know this is your show, but I must go in this direction to mm -hmm. get across my point. Yes. Yesterday afternoon, on the Julia Davis show, the Juju Love show, mm -hmm. she was talking about how. People who that what what um, uh, what's his name? Um, what's the comments had done? Mm -hmm. I think it's yesterday. She spoke. Could be the day before. I can't remember. But um, and what those are um, like like the, like the home for the girls in El Dorado mm -hmm. and all of these things that what's the comments is doing to assist the same people you were just alluding to. To better themselves, those who may have fallen through the cracks, and those who are being given a second and a third opportunity to better themselves mm -hmm. and to be to be relevant and to be and to be productive citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. I listen to a lot of people who were calling in and giving testimony to how they pass through certain youth camps and programs and how some of them one guy said he ended up in the coast guard for over 29 years and how it worked for him yeah the some people were actually literally calling in some of them were teachers who actually taught at these some of these um, institutions and how it bettered a lot of the young youths a lot of the citizens of this country that today some of them in the 60s and they, they, they said, listen, these things are proven to benefit those of us who couldn't make it academically or who tried, but maybe went on to into these schools and these these, um, these areas. Hmm. And today are productive citizens, were productive citizens and are productive citizens. But you know what happened in between that program? Three and TPNM fellas calling the usual suspects mm -hmm. and take up 20 minutes talking about all kind of stupidness attempting to debunk and be irrelevant mm -hmm. it, although it was on it was not only on the TV show as well but also on Pastor Google show mm -hmm. but being irrelevant because they recognize that hey, this was something good, and people were actually calling into the show. That was, I think, it was yesterday. You understand? And this is from the problem because you see the things that are good that are happening in the country not getting out there. Foster Commons is talking, but as, as you rightly say, many of us not taking up the opportunity and grasping at it. We African people, we are talk about it. Because I've seen it too. How many people, how many of us getting out there and saying, listen, I get a second or a third chance 
to do something for myself, to contribute to society, to not end up in jail, to not end up in national bracelets. But at the end of the day, the government giving me something and it's coming to me. And parents are supposed to be talking to the children and saying, hey, look them there, go down the road and talk to them and carry your documents, whatever you have. Whether it's little bit or not, carry it and let them see what you're doing. But that ain't making papers, Dominic Ruiz. Mm -hmm. That ain't making papers. Only when the government or when Foster come out and talk about it, begin to hear about it. But I looking. You understand? But you know what make papers? The woman up in San Miguel. Mm -hmm. That make papers. They had a Women's Day just this month here. The president, the honorable president of Trinidad and Tobago had something for the children. She invited the uh, speaker of the house and the opposition leader as a as woman to come and let us talk with these children and, and try to cut, influence these children. The speaker turned up. But Kamala Prasad Bissessa didn't turn up. Mm. That made news once. The excuse was she was busy. But children are dear to her heart. But she couldn't turn up as president. The president, you know, made a request. Mm. But she couldn't turn up to talk with the children. The children that she says she loves and she so care about. If she can't turn up for the children, Dominic. Mm. She could turn up to talk about crime with Dr. Rowley. Yes. And be honest about it. <laughs> and be sincere. And be concerned. And be truthful. And be honest. Or she go invite Chasne, who will say that she's a visionary leader. <laughs> Which is vision for the country, Dominic. Four meetings you had so far. What are the solutions that you came up with that, that we could say we could talk about? Outside again, everybody gone when we are done about already. And these are some of the things, nobody. But you see that, ladies, if you will make papers, that will make papers. Mm. That will be spoken about. But everything else that concerns and, and benefit Trinidad and Tobago and benefit the urban youth that people are talking about every day and blame it for everything, especially crime. That's not going to make papers. And they're going to have the little trolls and they will come on to disturb Google, to disturb Julia Davy. I try to change the discussion. You understand? I had to listen Monday when this woman say how much she has done for this country. She could take home here she could take home here to describe yeah. all that she has done. All the schools that she has built, all the all the, the, the roads that they paved, eh? All, eh? all these buildings that they have built. And only thing she could talk about, identify with, is the, is the Cuba hospital hmm. that she didn't even finish. She can't call the schools, she can't call the roads, she can't call no other building except one. And people buying that and clapping wholesale because, oh, God, she do so much. Hmm. Where she do so much. The same thing you alluded to with, with, with Anal talking about how much she do as compared to Dr. Rowley. Really? And this is some of the problems I have. That is why I keep, will keep saying, and I have to keep agreeing with you, that our social department in the PNM is not doing this blasting fuck. Come out and say, look at how much things Dr. Rowley spoke about in telling her his son. Just recently, about all the plans that they have in progress, things that are happening. But if it is that PLM don't pay for that and put it out there live when, it, when, when they're turning the sun, you will see it is nowhere else. Hmm. Don't forget, HTC new building, we pay half a million dollars every month 
going on my hand for that building, talking about these things. Such as close. But they would have 10 grand new apartment buildings at, at four, four levels for people, plus football grounds, cricket grounds, and maybe a little golf course. Maybe. We're talking about these things. After Dr. Rory talked about it today, the next thing we hear about it is when he's going to distribute keys. Mm. How many people are talking about furnace who building public private partnership buildings going up in San Fernando? You know what you're going to see? You see that black. You see push what he. Something with 
Wall Street mm. and the rest of the is protein. I don't blame Wall Street, you know, here yeah, why. If you are a presenter for a show mm -hmm. and you set your topic to be speaking about this, and Wall Street calls in, which is free to do, and he's going in the next direction, you as a presenter need to either tell him, that is not what he's speaking about, mm -hmm. and you have the opportunity to cut him off. But if you allow him to continue with the rhetoric and talking, all kind of things different. It was on Google's program, I was listening. Because I don't call in, because I am an employee at the Eldorado Girls Youth Camp mm -hmm. that they closed off. So my supervisor called me and said she called in first time ever. Another co-worker called in and then other stu past students would have called in and say where they were, where they are now, who in the army, who in the Coast Guard and all that. So that was the, um, the topic because the Minister of Youth Development National Services indicated that the MTS is handing over El Dorado to them in June and by September they will have the first intake. So that was the conversation. Wall Street calling and started to talk about data. Not data from Trinidad, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And not even data we could substantiate. Data from America. Talking about unemployment and all kind of foolishness. But I want to tell Wall Street, one of the poorest towns in New Jersey where you live in, I think it's Liverstone is the word if I'm not mistaken. Where unemployment and all kinds of things is about 30 something percent. And if you just go when they line them up, all in New and New Jersey, by all them places that just give out food, long, long line on Saturday, mm -hmm. because they can't buy food, they're going to line up to get food. Sometimes it'll be crawling and custom because how long that away. I wonder if he does go and notice that, or if he does go and help give out food. He don't live here, he don't pay taxes here. But in New Jersey where he lives, poverty is high. Mm. People live in below the poverty line because the grants, the food grants they used to get, you start to make a certain amount of money for the year in order to get it. They raise the ceiling of that. So it means those who are getting it, can't, and more people are not getting it. So that it putting a burden and strain on people because our next catchment of people now included in that. Why he doesn't talk about the suffering in New Jersey and the hunger in New Jersey and the lining up of food and custom? for food in, in, in New Jersey. Why you don't talk about the employment in New Jersey? It's there he lives. And the population in New Jersey is bigger than ours. But you're always calling to tell we about Trinidad. And some presenters, because if you don't take a call, Ms. David just cut you off. Mm. Some presenters allow me to talk and talk rhetoric. So how, how, how you can blame me? You have to blame, in my opinion, who allow me to talk that foolishness? You're talking about you camp, let the conversation with you camp. Ask him if you ever went to you camp. Ask him if you know about the you camp. Ask him before you leave Trinidad if there was a you camp. I will have to tell you and lead you in the conversation. Not allow you to talk your rhetoric. And for the gentleman who don't insult with his behavior that you talk about, the power of healing is in the hand of the Lord. You need to get some healing because you started off to people talking about God. You need to go back to the God and let God deal with whatever feelings that you're told him because your song then hurts and hurt people, hurt people. You could be listening and you can make a live and call me and that's okay. But you see me, as you know, Kamala used to say, my heart, my heart pure, my hand clean. I can afford to say my dealings with that gentleman and everybody I deal with. My hands are clean, my heart is pure. So I stand here, and I'm, I know you don't even know Miss Daisy. And that's what make it so hurt, not hurtful at all, but hurtful for him, watching him doing the things he's doing. When you don't even know the piece that he's really talking about. But it's a sad, and I come right back to the lady who would come get a lawyer for her and singing she praises. Because come get a lawyer. Your son ain't with no case. Any lawyer can come and talk to you. That means to say the will help you. A lawyer does listen. They ask us to listen. That means they're taking your case. That means the case going away. Do you feel they're going to do it for free? Mm. I don't know. So, again, people talk processes and the lack of emotional intelligence. 
And again, the intelligence, when I talk about that, is not that it's stupid. It's about able to control emotion, your anger. So mommy angry because how they treat her son. And in that anger, she make a decision because Kamala and them sell a lawyer. Mama guy think she's supporting the U.S., you know. That is making a decision based on not using emotional intelligence. Is the same over the gentleman in point 14. You ain't get this or you ain't get that or whatever it is. And you decide to pull everybody into the hurting feeling to try to throw something on them because you're projecting your feeling of inequality, insecurity, and feeling that you have not achieved and trying to project that on others by pulling everybody into your seat. And that's what people do in this country, you know, some of them, you know, project how they feel about themselves onto you. Well, it's really the self who they're talking about. So you ain't going to even watch this Dr. Ronnie Blank, man, black man, he did that. It's because when they watch him, they wish they could have achieved the things he achieved because they will achieve nothing. So it comes from jealousy. So we have to understand that also. And because that's a real thing we're dealing with. People are not using emotional intelligence. And because them hurt, everybody must be hurt. Mm. So sometimes we have to change the language when we speak into them and understand when they're coming from that place that hurt them. And they're coming from a place where they're projecting. Because plenty of them walking around. And you could get them as well as that thing say, chubby and our cricks and water. Mm. And we pushy pushy. Remember that statement. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Give them the vital supplies and pull a hose. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. And you're good to go. Folks, thank you for joining me this morning. We will talk again on Sunday morning, God's willing. Um, I saw something I just wanted to touch on quickly. Right, Priscilla was saying some citizens can't come out of their community to make use of the opportunities, which is true because in some cases, you have this border thing and six and seven and whatever, and who can't go here and who can't go there and so on. Right? But that needs to be addressed. Right? So thank you so much for joining me this morning, folks. And we will chat again on Sunday. God's willing, always a pleasure to be with you guys. May today be a fruitful and productive day. And on Sunday, I'm sure there will be a lot more to talk about. Yeah? So join me on Sunday morning at 11. Elizabeth Ramtahal, morning to you. Thank you so much, Winston Jack, Claire Carrington, Joycelyn, Harold Briggs. <laughs> Harold says the woman is not from Grady. She has nowhere not to send colleges. It's situated. Yeah. See, but she have kick out the PNM using her as a, yeah, a puppet. Yeah, a puppy show. Sure. Folks, Sunday. We will chat. <laughs>